Thanks for coming, Juan, and thanks everybody for coming with me. Uh, so, it's our pleasure to have you here at Musete de Volcreta from Marseille, right? Yeah. Uh, And he's going to talk about a very nice topic on the on the relation between quantum stuff and, and gravity stuff, let's say, because of gravity quantum situation. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you to invite me uh, today. Thank you for coming. So uh, yes, I'm from Ex Marseille University from this lab, uh, Laboratoire d'Informatique Fundamental, the Computer Science Department. Uh, the logo of uh, Universidad de Valencia is there because I'm actually visiting there in this period. So let me precise immediately that uh, I will talk here uh, today um, about simulation of classical gravitational fields. So this is uh, important. Uh, so metrics on regular fixed background uh, space-time lattice and we will not consider other fields interaction the model creation, particle creation, uh, nonlinearities, etc. So very easy stuff. And quantum simulation because we are using uh, a simulator uh, which is exactly a single particle uh, uh, sector of QCA, a quantum cellular automata, namely a quantum work. Uh, how many of you uh, know about uh, quantum work? Okay, a bit. Okay, about well, twenty percent probably. Uh, I will uh, I will give uh, give you an extensive introduction on quantum works, and in the second part I will uh, approach uh, the main um, topic of this uh, of this speech, and then I conclude with some uh, uh, fundamental uh, consequences of my of my uh, model. So first of all, why quantum works? Quantum works. Uh, is a very useful uh, model to understand and simulate many quantum natural phenomena. We have uh, several examples, like the first one probably in science, energy transfer in photosynthetic systems, molecular binding from the, the uh, group of Bonn in uh, German, uh, from Albrecht and others, and uh, carriers density in graphene. And we know that quantum works model uh, massless quasi-particle uh, in this kind of graphene-like materials. And then we know the quantum works can model relativistic transport. Uh, more exactly, uh, we knew that because uh, Feynman was the first one to discretize a Dirac propagator with uh, what we probably know as the Feynman checkboard. And the Feynman checkboard is very, very close to the modern definition of quantum work. OK. Let me uh, introduce you uh, the classical counterpart of our quantum work. So uh, you probably well known uh, the classical round work. Uh, this guy is probably quite drunk, and he should move on this uh, uh, one-dimensional, uh, uh, two-dimensional space-time uh, lattice, where space and time are discretized, delta t and delta x, delta x. We know that uh, he tried. Uh, tries to come back at home uh, just flipping a classical coin uh, and we suppose that uh, each event is fully independent from each other at each time step and in general we can consider that there are two different probabilities A and B in general not equal to go towards the right or towards the left at each time step and if these assumptions are true and if we oops, and if we start from uh, a localized initial condition, we know that the probability to find our classical worker at time t and position x is a solution of this finite difference equation. And, uh, and the solution is exactly a binomial distribution. And if we uh, take, uh, simulate uh, a, a larger amount of, uh, of a path, for, so for large n, we can uh, draw our continuous probability distribution as a Gaussian, and, uh, mm, uh, and we know mm, very well that the sigma, the, the variance of this, uh, uh, of this probability distribution, scales as the square root of time. This is a signature of, of diffusion process. Now, uh, 
let's come back to our uh, quantum realm. And uh, just uh, let me precise that here there is no randomness. Uh, the quantum work was introduced first as a, a one particle sector in 80, uh, uh, 88 in complex system journals by uh, Grossing and Zellinger, but was popularized. We know quantum works uh, uh, mostly for the paper of uh, uh, Alan of David Eugene and Zagori in uh, uh, 93. They introduced uh, randomness because at each time step they uh, project, they measure the state. And this is the reason because uh, the title of that, pa the, that article was uh, Quantum Random Work. But the, the exact, uh, the right uh, title for this speech will be Quantum Works because here we have uh, not at all randomness. We don't introduce any uh, non unitary uh, operation. Then uh, the main difference between quantum worker and a classical worker is that the state is described by uh, probability amplitude and not real probabilities. And at each time step, our worker moves in a superposition of both left and right and display interferences. More formally, our quantum work can be represented by a two component wave function at each time step j. Uh, he lives in a, a composite Hilbert space uh, where Z is the position space and Kappa is the coin space here. Uh, I, let me consider just a, 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 a two dimensional uh, uh, coin space. Uh, it's, it's absolutely, this is uh, absolutely generalizable to uh, n flavor, n internal state uh, uh, wave function. So, uh, but let me just con uh, pro consider this case. And uh, clear, uh, we want to describe a unitary dynamics, so we want to uh, introduce, uh, we need to introduce uh, the, the unitary operators. Uh, in a con this composite Hilbert space, act uh, first a quantum coin. That is the analogous of our classical coin. And uh, you will see here, because the, the, the base is here a bidimensional, we need just an element of U2, an element of this unitary group, and we know that an element of U2 is well described, is fully described by four real parameters, alpha, C, theta, and theta. And then the translation operator. The translation operator acts directly on the composite Hilbert space. And this uh, translation operator is composed by, uh, this is the, 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 the nicest uh, part of the definition of the quantum work operator. This is composed by a projector on the coin state space. And then the usual translation operator, but with the spin dependent shift function uh, inside, uh, which moves the particle towards the left when this particle is projected on the left coin state, and moves the particle on, on the, towards the right when the particle is projected to the, uh, into the right coin state. So let me just me uh, Summarize, uh, we prepare our initial state around m equals zero, localize initial state in this case. We apply our uh, uh, rotation, our quantum coin, that is again the analogous of just flip the coin before, uh, uh, before moving. And then we shift. So you can see that the left uh, one state, one, the projection uh, of, the part of the state on one state uh, of the basis, the coin state basis uh, is moved uh, towards the left and the other towards the right. So this is the standard, the modern definition of a quantum work. A very famous example of quantum work is the Adamar work, uh, where we define the quantum coin as the Adamar uh, coin or the Adamar gate. And if we explicitly write the equation, the finite difference equation are this couple of finite difference equation. Looks very simple, but they are already uh, very rich respect to uh, the standard propagation. In fact, let me just recall this remarkable experience was the first one by Kaske and others, uh, always the group of Bonn in German. Uh, they simulated uh, an Adamar walk uh, on uh, a one-dimensional spin-dependent lattice. And you can see here six times step, then they project. And then, after a number of, uh, of uh, several hundreds of identical realization, they can build the probability distribution. So here, 
you can observe uh, the peculiar uh, probability distribution, very different from the classical one, the classical and the work, the bell-shaped curve here. And here we uh, instead observe two different peaks for an, init an initial symmetric uh, condition. If we increase the number of time step and a grid point, the, the, the immediate remark that we can do is that the sigma now spreads uh, proportional to, to the time step and not to the square root of time step. So this is a clear uh, signature of the fact that quantum works are very important for complexity and for quantum algorithmic, uh, algorithmics. Uh, because they uh, spread faster than classical and, uh, classical and works. Now, uh, if I want to, uh, you know, uh, if you want to uh, compute, uh, find, uh, or analyze the an analytical uh, solution, uh, you cannot uh, find the an analytical solution of a finite difference equation, but you can take the continuous limit and, and study the analytical solution, which approximate at first order the finite difference yes. equation. Uh, separates at the square root of j. No, I don't mean the, 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 the sigma. Yeah, the, the sigma uh, is linear with time. Yeah, and the and, and m. Yeah, is, is uh, also going. Yeah, well, I see that. Uh, the, the you mean the velocity, velocity of the border here? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's goes to the, the velocity, just let me come back here, one, just one I moment. The, the peaks of the distribution separates with j or with the square no. root of j? Uh, they separate with the, with the square root of, of co uh, cosinus of theta. And you can see here, uh, if, if uh, the co uh, here the theta is not uh, pi over 4, but is just 0, here, if you replace uh, uh, in the quantum cone, you obtain just a diagonal matrix that is just sigma z, the, the third power matrices. And here, you have just transport of psi l equal to psi l minus 1, psi l equal to psi minus psi l uh, of uh, m plus 1. This means that this, uh, in this case, the quantum work spread at um, uh, the, the, the distance that you mean is just uh, t over 2. Because the velocity, the limit velocity, is, is just one. But in the other case, spread with uh, a factor square root of two, because uh, uh, because there is uh, an interference pattern between uh, the two peaks. So, uh, is a sort of coupling effect between the two components. But the variance is always it is always linear in t. So, in uh, ideally, uh, if your theta approach pi over two. Uh, this distance here decreases. In the limit uh, of theta equal pi over 2, you have no more propagation because uh, uh, your, uh, your, um, your component oscillates uh, without propagation around you. So in the, in the limit theta equal pi over 2, you have just one straight line here. Or more exactly, you have uh, uh, one uh, oscillation around 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what, what does it happen when, uh, uh, if we take the continuum limit of, of the finite difference equation of a classical and work? We well know we obtain a diffusion equation. But what does it happen in the case of the quantum work? We expect uh, a, a ballistic transport because of uh, this, uh, this um, um, scale of sigma. And in fact, uh, if we define, uh, in the, as in the case of the classical and work, we define a time step here and the space step here, delta t and delta x, and we uh, assume that they are uh, uh, of the same order, epsilon. Then, uh, after a Taylor expansion of the finite difference equation and uh, moved the epsilon to zero, uh, we can recover, it's a theorem, we can recover a Dirac equation, a massive Dirac equation. Let me just uh, give you an example to, to be concrete. Uh, take, for example, uh, this quantum coin. This quantum coin, we have he, uh, just replaced theta by epsilon m. Epsilon is the same epsilon as before. m is a real number. Now, uh, if we write explicitly the, the finite difference equation for each component, we obtain this. Uh, you can see easily, you multiply this matrix for psi L and psi R, 
and then each component is translated towards the left and towards the right respect to the chiral the 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 spin, the, the spin hmm, of the of the wave function okay so it's very uh, easy to see from that and if we expand around epsilon go, uh, epsilon equal to 0 we can easily uh, see that uh, this term at zero order is zero, this term at zero order is zero, this term at zero order is one, and uh, here we obtain the, the, the partial, uh, the partial uh, uh, x here and here, and here at first order we obtain epsilon m. In other words, we obtain this two couple of partial difference equation. It's very, very easy to see from that. If you expand around epsilon, epsilon equal to zero and then we uh, truncated the first order, okay? So we can see that our theta is in some sense related to our m, the, the, the mass of the, the particle. It's not, uh, uh, it's not surprising because uh, just before we uh, answered you, I just said that uh, theta represents a sort of coupling effect between two components, and the mass is exactly that. It's a coupling, coupling term between uh, the two components. So I said, so you said that when, when theta is zero, is the mass case? And yeah, exactly. Propagation in that case? Uh, when, when theta is equal to zero, zero, we have just, this term is, is zero, we have just, just propagation. propagation. But you said that it remains localized in the center? No, when, when theta, theta uh, when this term is equal to pi over two, these are zero, these are uh, one, uh, this is a diagonal of the diagonal okay, matrix, okay, okay. so you have no propagation, but in the discrete case, we have an oscillation around 0, 1, and minus 1, 1. 0, 1, and minus 1, exactly. This is the infinite mass limit, in a sense. Yeah, exactly. So there is no propagation because the both paths interfere, that there is a term that phase in both paths path, path that interfere? No, there is no propagation because uh, uh, imagine that uh, these, uh, these two terms here are 0. You have just enough diagonal matrix here. So if you plot this matrix here, you get that the PL, so the, this component, is equal to the, the, the PL times T plus delta T is equal to uh, I psi R uh, at, at the position X minus delta X, and the same here. So you have not propagation, because when you compute the first order, uh, the, the derivative in x is over, over the second order. Is over second order, yeah. So you have not propagation. It, it's very easy to to, to see from uh, from that. If you, if you plot this matrix of the diagonal matrix here, you see that there is no spread of the component. And as you as you your colleague just uh, said before. Uh, you are in a sort of uh, infinite mass limit, in some sense. From a quantum works perspective, you are just a, a, a flip between the two spin uh, components. No propagation, just a flip. So, setting this uh, delta x and delta t equal is like taking the speed of light to one, but if they are unequal, then you have some more speed of light? Yeah, the speed of light here is uh, ideally one. But if you consider delta x and delta t different from zero, do you still get a direct correspondence from more speed of light, or what are <coughs> the in the case? Uh, here, what we can obtain is uh, c is equal uh, always c uh, equal to one. What we can obtain here is a vanishing mass or not vanishing mass. Do you think that we can? Yes. So my question is, you do the same thing, but clearly change the, velo the group velocity delta change delta because you have a mass, we have not a mass, so change the but velocity. But delta x is not equal to delta t. Sorry? If delta x is not equal to delta t, what do you get? Uh, it's a good question because uh, if, uh, if uh, for instance, uh, delta x is of order uh, epsilon, uh, uh, epsilon square and not epsilon exactly, uh, your propagative part uh, uh, is, uh, is not the leading order. So it's, it's for instance, uh, of order epsilon square. So you, in the continuum limit, you do not observe the propagative part, and you just observe the temp the, 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 this part, this partial derivative in time. This part is, uh, is not in the leading order, so it's of order epsilon square. You are not this part. So clear, you can, uh, uh, you can choose any scaling uh, in epsilon. You can put here two different exponents for delta x and delta t, 
and even for your maths you can put another exponent here and you can choose any scaling uh, for each exponent but clear the richest uh, uh, case is when all these epsilon are equal because you uh, take uh, all the term of the finite difference equation at the leading order it's because uh, I just use this epsilon uh, all equal in all cases this happens when we get one space dimension yeah not uh, if you go to Space I mentioned this doesn't happen. Uh, I mean, there is no three, relation. Three, three space spatial space. dimension or, two, or three space time dimension? No. I mean, you increase the space dimension to, to, to have instead of a straight line, you have a, a plane, or even you have a volume, a deep volume in your, in your wall. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. This doesn't happen. That, that you get something like the direct equation. Well, uh, actually, uh, it's been already proved that uh, these, uh, these happen in all dimensions. In all? All dimensions. There, there is a, a paper, uh, a, a quite mathematical uh, paper of, um, with a theorem uh, about convergence uh, by Pablo Righi and uh, I don't remember the, the other's uh, author, uh, which proved uh, also Weimar, uh, um, I, I, I don't remember, but Pablo Righi is, is for sure who uh, proved that uh, there is a, a theorem in uh, all dimension which proved the convergence of, uh, of the quantum works to the Dirac equation, in all dimensions. Then, uh, um, in all, uh, all dimension D. All. all dimension D. Even or odd dimension. Yeah. Clearly, your Hilbert space will be much larger <coughs> than this, but it uh, can be proved. You know what, I am asking that because M is something that uh, a mix. If you do, for instance, in three dimension, in three space dimension, four space time, okay. As you do, of as you, with the other as you do that you have in the Lorentz. Okay. Yeah. So M is something that uh, mixes both both uh, one, uh, both uh, both groups. Okay. The representation of both groups to form the representation of the direct equation. But when you are in one dimension. You don't have any rotation at all. Okay, so what you have there is the particle and the antiparticle, mm -hmm. the upper and and, uh, and lower parts of the Dirac equation represent that. They do not have anything to do with rotation. Mm -hmm. When you increase the space dimension, then M acquires this uh, this uh, this meaning. No, no, uh, I understand, but um, uh, I will uh, I will give you the references. Okay. But uh, uh, it's it's uh, it, it has been proved uh, theoretically, and then there are also some experiences in in, uh, in the Bond group of a two-dimensional uh, spatial dimensional, uh, so two plus one, uh, um, with quantum works to realize Dirac equation coupled with magnetic field, etc., to study control effect. And um, so they are, it's a quite uh, solid uh, result. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, but uh, it's, a, it's a good question. And uh, actually, there is also a generalization of that uh, for Young Mills theory. So you can imagine that for each term of this diagonal part, you have an SU n uh, matrix. So this uh, make a much more, uh, much more complicated your operation. But, uh, but this is an internal. Okay, let me just uh, show you the numerical simulation. This is a log lean scale, and you have the red solid line is the direct equation, the, the analytical solution, and the blue line is the quantum work. You can observe that there is an epsilon error here, but clear, larger is your numerical isolation, smaller is epsilon, and better is the convergence of two. And clearly, again, you can obtain exactly the same in all dimension, this plot, exactly this is plot. OK, let me skip to the second part. Uh, so uh, well, we will know that, uh, just to cite John Wheeler, that there is an interplay between matter and, and matrix. As he told us, matter sets space how to carve, and space sets matter how to, uh, to move. 
And we know that for each space-time metric, we can associate uh, a, a metric G mu nu that can be diagonalized uh, in terms of, of tetrads fields E A mu, where eta is just the flat Lorentzian metric. So the question is, can we describe covered propagation with a quantum world? So this is the key question of this uh, talk. So uh, intuitively, you have two different ways. OK, the first one is, so how you can map this on this? Because this is, in your lab, is just your fixed background, is, is your quantum optical circuit, et cetera. So how you can map the first on the second? So the first idea is, OK, let me stretch the distance between vertex, like uh, probably you know Rege calculus or approximation of a curved surface with complex uh, sandwiches. And in that case, you, you do something like that. You stretch and you approximate with triangle, et cetera. And this is the first, uh, the first idea, the, for, the form the lattice. The second one, but it's not exactly what I want, because uh, in my lab, I have a, a, rigid, uh, a rigid lattice. And so I can do it uh, in, uh, in my lab. The other idea is, OK, I encode uh, the information of the metric in the only uh, set of parameters that I have in, in my quantum work. And the only set of parameters is the four parameter, real parameters I have in my, in my quantum coin. So I can imagine that if I plug, if I plug uh, the, the information of the metric in the quantum coin, we, we can uh, approximate uh, uh, such curved uh, trajectory. And indeed, is the, the right answer, but uh, we will see that it's not sufficient. So let me uh, check as uh, before the first, the zero order. So we have the zero order here. And the zero order, this is the finite difference equation. At the zero order, delta x and delta t goes to zero. So this is just uh, uh, psi equal to uh, the, the zero order of, of b and psi again. Because the shift operator goes to zero, to, goes to the density, and the delta t here goes to, uh, to zero. Okay? So uh, the zero order condition uh, means that I have to satisfy this equation. And to satisfy this equation, B0 should be exactly the identity. So now, OK, you can say, why not? Uh, I choose B0 equal to the identity. I expand at first order. It means that my field, my B, should be not so far exactly over the epsilon, not so far from B0, so not so far from the identity. And this, uh, this is a strong constraint for my for my simulation. But let's, let's go on. Let's go ahead and, and we will see. Uh, if I uh, take the constraint and I compute the first order, uh, well, I will not explain all the, the computation, but it is trivial that you can expand the, the, the shift operator and the first order of the coin, and you can obtain this finite difference equation. As you can see, what you obtain is, yes, a Dirac equation, but with a space-time uh, dependent mass. It's not exactly what we want. because uh, in Dirac equation, we have something that is a derivative of the metric, a spin connection, etc. So it's not exactly, I forgot an equal one, but an equal zero. But this, uh, this operator is not exactly what I look, I'm looking for. So it's not sufficient, just cho uh, choose a space-time dependent coin. And uh, uh, we need to uh, relax the zero order condition. So we need to relax. Uh, the, the equation of before. Let me come back to our space-time network here. And, uh, and let me notice that there are two different uh, answers to this problem. The first one was introduced uh, by me during my PhD uh, in uh, tier T and uh, with a model that I called a stroboscopic quantum work. And the other solution was introduced by uh, Arig and others in uh, 16 in, uh, in pair in, uh, with a model that is called, uh, which is called paired quantum work. So I will introduce first uh, the, my model. And then I will uh, spend some, uh, some uh, uh, minutes on, on the second one, on this one. So stroboscopic quantum work, what does it mean? Uh, each uh, vertex, uh, in each vertex, we apply uh, our local rotation. But we, s we have seen that if we compute the continuum limit at each time step, we do not converge to uh, the Carver-Dirac equation. So we need to relax 
the, the zero order condition. To do it, what I, now it's, it's uh, in some sense trivial, but uh, before I found the, the solution, it was not so trivial. What, but uh, what I introduced is a, a, a stroboscope of period two. So uh, I just grouped the, the unitaries in time, just in time. And, uh, and I observed the quantum state here through a stroboscope of period two. So I teach uh, time step now. Um, I have an equation much more complicated because my time step is tau and non-j. Non so my, my finite difference equation looks like the previous one, but this operator is much more complicated. And uh, you can uh, now see that if I compute the zero order condition, uh, again, delta t goes to zero, delta x goes to zero, so the shift operator goes to zero, and everything here, depending on delta x and delta t, goes to zero, but not uh, the first or uh, the, our quantum coin. And uh, um, we can easily uh, check that this w operator uh, for delta x and delta t goes uh, to zero, uh, recover just uh, the square of b. So to satisfy this finite difference equation, we should just find a, a quantum coin which satisfy this equation. And this is clearly, uh, first of all, there is no constraint here. We, yes, we have an equation, but we can choose an, uh, a, a, there is a, a, a very large class of quantum coin which, which respect this, uh, this equation. In particular, we can choose this quantum coin. This quantum coin, if you compute the, the square of this quantum coin, you obtain, uh, you, uh, you can, uh, this is just identity. So you satisfy the zero order condition. Your theta is, can, uh, uh, can take any value of, of theta um, uh, between zero and two pi. We do not uh, have the constraint to be uh, close to the identity. And when we compute the first order, uh, but surprisingly we obtain this. Uh, after an, a quite long computation of diagonalization of, uh, of the operator, but we obtained this uh, couple of partial difference equation. Uh, when theta is constant, we recover just the free and linear Dirac equation. But yes, this is a constant factor that can be absorbed in a new definition of x, but this is exactly the free and linear massless Dirac equation. And when theta is not constant, no longer constant, this is just a, a, this is a related in some sense a, to the spin connection up to a, a, a factor that is called the spin or density. And uh, 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 it's curious that we, we can write down the, 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 the metric, that is, which is a synchronous metric in this case, and uh, which reads um, exactly um, one and minus one over cosinus square of theta. So, how can we, uh, yes? Sorry. No, no, no. So, the dependence on t is not required to the, for that, okay? So, uh, you put uh, theta as a function of t and x, but really you don't have any dependence on, on, on the fact that it, there is no relation to the fact that t may depend on, not on yes. time. Yes, more precisely, yes, thank you for the question, but more precisely, before write this uh, two couple, very nice couple uh, of partial difference equation, if you take the continuum limit of this equation, uh, you will have a main derivative in time and space of theta. What we, what we do uh, is a, a change of variable. We, we uh, diagonalize the operator and we, um, we just uh, need to remark that this basis that we use to di diagonalize the operator is a local basis, depending on x and t. So it's, uh, uh, it's important to get this equation that theta depends on t and x for the intermediate uh, uh, sets that I just don't, didn't show you so here. So you have a stationary metric, you don't have that? Uh, metric. Yeah, 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 you, 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 can, uh, you, can, you can recover the same equation, but you uh, lost the dependence. Uh, um, you lost the dependence on of t in the previous passage. It, it's, it's just less general, but yes, you can recover the same equation where theta is just dependent on on x. And okay. So, one question: uh, The 
Rita, no, the person the place that you are, no, in the place of the body. Uh -huh. And then I'm wondering if this is so, and there is some sort of a very small noise that it, uh, as you are in one dimension, this can make the system to be very different, and in the quantum work, everything is going to be localized, and all these things, you know? Uh, uh, so well, this is a, a very interesting question. Um, it is very dangerous that the signal depends on the, on the place, at least in one dimension, I mean, too. Yeah, um, in some sense, it's the only way to, to recover cover Dirac equation, because uh, if theta uh, is related to the metric, uh, you need at least that it depends on, on time or space to recover your Dirac equation, otherwise it's just flex um, space-time metric. And, but it's, it's an important question be, uh, because uh, it, it's uh, a clear, uh, important field of research from, from uh, considered noise in this uh, in this kind of system, you know, with uh, a noisy metric, with a small fluctuation around uh, around the flat uh, flat space-time metric, we did it with uh, a, a, a dynamical noise. Uh, we published a, a paper on physica, uh, uh, just plugged some noise, dynamical noise, in this model, and uh, we observe. Uh, we you can easily. Um, you can easily um, guess that we observe diffusion at se in asymptotic time. We observe diffusion because because this because this uh, this coherence is lost at certain time and in asymptotic line is, is lost. So, so what we observe is just uh, is diffusion. You can uh, you can study. This noise was local. Hmm. Sorry, was global. The noise that you're putting is global. So you have some it's dependent on theta, and then you have some global noise on top of that. Uh, yeah, in, uh, in uh, the case that uh, we, we simulated the theta was dependent on t, not x. Otherwise, I, I guess that we got something like uh, localization. But when theta depends on t, uh, we, yes, we can uh, plug some uh, noise independent. The configuration of the noise uh, should be independent at each time step. Um, and uh, we can study it with the standard uh, Limbladian operator, etc., and we got in a synthetic line the time uh, diffusion. Um, yeah. So let me uh, show you a couple of examples. Uh, first of all, I uh, I tried to uh, to simulate. Uh, the radial propagation of uh, a, a massless fermion, because in, in our model, in that particular case, it was just a massless fermion that can be generalized to a massive fermion, but in that case, it was a massless, uh, which propagates on, on the radial part of this metric. Just let me recall the, the metric. This is in limited coordinate to just come back to a synchronous uh, coordinate system that we, we needed to, to plug our metric in this one. And because the, uh, we just simulated the radial part, we just forget the, the, the angular part. We don't need Well, this is a radi gravitational radius, but you, you should uh, well know that. Uh, this is a function which depends on t and x. Uh, kappa is a control parameter for our numerical simulation. And uh, this is the crucial point. How can we encode this metric in, uh, in our, let me say, our quantum work metric? Now, now it's, uh, it's some sense uh, uh, clear, because uh, when, once we derived in continuum limit the metric corresponding to our quantum work, we just identify each component. This is just one. And we identify these two components. And so in our theta, that, uh, let me recall that this theta, there are no constraints uh, on this theta. We can uh, uh, plug this function. So our theta will be the arcosinus of this function. Here are uh, four or better three uh, different numerical uh, uh, and physical situations. Uh, in the first two on the top figures, let me just focus, uh, focus here in that zoom out that here in the orange, the orange is just the quantum work and the black solid line is the uh, null geodesics that we computed analytically. This is uh, the, the, the true null geodesics. And this is the quantum works the, uh, distribution. So here we have uh, this situation where we start uh, between the singularity and the horizon. 
here we start again between the singularity and the horizon. Here, uh, both branches uh, fall in, uh, in the black hole, in the singularity. Here we start uh, uh, exactly on the, sing on, uh, on the horizon. And one branch follows the null geodesics uh, asymptotically, uh, anytime stay there. And the other, fall, uh, the other geode null geodesics and fall in the black hole. And here you can see that if we start outside the horizon, one branch uh, following the new geodesics uh, escape far from the black hole and the other fall in the black hole. Another uh, example could be a friedman robertson walker metric. Uh, again, I just forgot the, uh, the spatial curvature. I, just, uh, I will take just the first uh, uh, component here, the, what we call the scale factor. And again, uh, we encode uh, our scale factor in our theta. We identify the, the first, the, the component G1, G, uh, G11 of the metric, and uh, we let the quantum work evaluate freely. Uh, this figure is thanks to Stefano. And uh, you can see that the, the uh, probability distribution follows perfectly the null geodesics, the yellow one. So what is the assumption that you can Sorry, can you also? Where, where, why are you not observing periodicity in your solutions when you have this cosine of theta? So you, why are you, you not observing? There should be some periodicity, you know? so your, your control parameter is ah, yeah, yeah. cosine of theta. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, we, we don't observe uh, periodicity if we stay in this computational domain. The red uh, solid line is our computational domain. So all our numerical simulations are uh, included between the singularity that we don't, we cannot pass through and the, uh, the red solid line which is the computational, which define our computational domain where we don't observe periodicity. So here is the, the solid line coincide with the horizon, the horizon, sorry, and here the solid line is too far from the singularity, we, we cannot see that. Thank you for the question. It's, it's uh, because we introduce our kappa, our control parameter. Now, let me review, uh, just in a, in a couple of slides, uh, what is the other model, uh, the paired quantum work, introduced in 16 by Pablo and Stefano Facchini and uh, uh, Marcelo Fauré. Um, uh, we come back to our uh, space-time network. Uh, here time and here space. Uh, each vertex represents the local unitaries that I, that I, can, I can tune. And what they did is, um, in uh, some sense, a sort of generalization uh, in, uh, respect to what I did in my PhD, uh, is not a time grouping, but a space-time grouping. So the space-time group, um, um, uh, this sector, square sector of the lattice, it's not square here, but square sector, and they plug, they map, this model that is for C2, because you, you should imagine that here you have a, a, a two-component wave function, so you have a C2 uh, entry here, to a model for a C4, uh, a C4 uh, spinner, a C4 wave function, okay? So, and this is what uh, uh, we called, uh, they called, a paired quantum work. But now, our quantum coin, our unitary, W, is this large unitary. What they obtained, uh, they obtain exactly our results, but with uh, a, a sort of generalization, we can, in the continuum limit, they can recover any space-time, any non-diagonal metric. Yes, sure, you can remark that uh, any, uh, any metrics can uh, be changed in a synchronous space-time metric, but just to remark that can, they can obtain any space-time, not, not diagonal uh, metric. The disadvantage uh, is clearly the fact that you should uh, uh, consider a, a, a much larger uh, Hilbert space respect to the usual one. It can be easily reproduced in our, in our lab, for, a, if, for instance, with the quantum uh, optical circuit. So just to come back to the question before, the initial question, we can uh, generalize this model. There are already uh, there is already a, a recent paper um, of uh, a 1 plus d dimension. We can generalize this case to 1 plus 2. Um, we should clearly space-time group in, uh, in each, uh, in each uh, dimension of space. And this, 
uh, makes uh, our Hilbert space very large and much larger when we consider uh, 1 plus 3 and 1 plus d, the theorem uh, I, I told you before is for 1 plus d. Now, let me resume some, uh, some uh, results of this part. Uh, a quantum work with a space-time dependent quantum coin can simulate covered quantum propagation. In the continuum limit, we know that this quantum work recover uh, the covered Dirac equation, and uh, we can access, this is to me uh, an interesting, very interesting point, we can access to the covered over the space-time through the quantum coin. Clearly, just let me record that uh, we are speaking on, of, um, about uh, analog of gravity. We have not uh, energy tensor here, but, but it's quite interesting that we have a, 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 um, a clear relation between, between the curvature that we want to simulate and the quantum coin, and the parameter of our, our uh, quantum coin. So let me conclude with uh, some uh, remarks and some observation. <coughs> um, uh, let me precise, but probably you understood that, that uh, if we want to simulate a, a space-time metric, uh, G, um, what we do is to um, uh, change our B upon the metric that we want to simulate. It means that in principle, it's this, right? In principle, we have an infinite number of local unitaries that we should plug at each point of the lattice so if you want to approximate the, the space-time metrics. And well, this is, uh, this is uh, less practical from uh, an experimental point of view, it's uh, at least uh, much more expensive. And, uh, um, and from a, a fundamental point of view, probably it's not uh, so nice if you want to approach, in some sense, to a sort of quantization of the space-time method. Yeah. Excuse me, Yeah, no, 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 it's uh, uh, Before, just yes, before the, the paying, uh, you mentioned that that you have was uh, minus cos theta times uh -huh. uh, sigma 3 and then sin theta plus uh, sigma 2, for instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sigma, sigma means the power of the matrix. Uh -huh. so, so when you have uh, a horizon, uh -huh. you have only sigma 2. Ah, uh, yeah. in the horizon, in the similarity, you mean? horizon, you have uh, mm -hmm. type equal over uh, I suppose that you mean in the element coordinates you mean uh, the singularity because we have eliminated the singularity on the horizon. Yeah. So in the singularity, yeah. What does it mean from the point of view of this geometry that you are thinking there? Ah, in, uh, when, uh, kind this, of this is a good question. Uh, ah, this is a good question because it is, uh, it's exactly what we discussed before with, uh, with Carlos. Uh, well, even uh, we, we cannot, in some sense, arrive to uh, we cannot uh, arrive exactly on the singularity because uh, there is a singularity. We can model uh, the singularity, but we can approach an axiom near to the singularity. So uh, what we can say is that uh, uh, we describe uh, uh, from a cinematic point of view, we can describe exactly the, the trajectory of a fermion propagating, spreading in this covered space time. But uh, uh, sadly, uh, I cannot say anything about the singularity because it's something that, in some sense, we drop out from our model. We, can, we cannot describe it. But for instance, if we uh, look at for a, a traversable uh, singularity, for instance, a wormhole, we can, in some sense, find uh, a, a, a coordinate uh, change such that this singularity uh, is removed and we can probably pass through the singularity. But when this singularity cannot be removed, uh, honestly, I cannot say anything from my perspective, probably from an other theoretical and experimental perspective. Yes, there, are, there will be um, consideration to do, but... Uh, but were you asking about the horizon or, or about the, the actual singularity? I was asking about the, the horizon, because the horizon, because first theta should be zero, and then it means that the B2, the BJM that you have there, let me, is, let only, me come back, uh, is, uh, is only sigma 2 times uh, sigma 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but in the coordinates of the... Yeah, there is no horizon. In this particular case of elementary coordinates, 
Because we are right if we stay in this Rothschild coordinate, but here to stay in a synchronous metric, we just remove the singularity at the horizon, so there, there is no oh, yeah, singularity yeah, yeah. there. But there is still the singularity in the, the true singularity. Uh, as a matter of fact, you see any any hint of uh, when when God presents the, sing the sing singularity, what you see is that you are going to the problem of the unitarity, you lose your unitarity by that. I mean, or, or just that you see perhaps that uh, the body functions. Uh, the, 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 the part that go outside the, the, the horizon uh, start to increase the, the, the amplitude there before. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, probably. Uh, here, uh, what, you're what, what, you, what yeah. you, you are saying is that yeah. from here, what, what, what does it happen? What does it happen? Here, uh, if, uh, for instance, if I put the density here to zero, quite uh, roughly speaking, clearly I lose, pro unit, uh, I lose probability, yeah. and clearly this is not a, a neutral evolution. Exactly what we uh, didn't do, uh, because, um, uh, because we know that we cannot, observe, uh, we cannot model the singularity, uh, what we replace here is, uh, uh, is just flat flatness. So to conserve probability, we replace here flatness, and we mask and we uh, don't show this part. Because it's the only way for us to observe cinematically the particle propagating this sector of this space-time. I don't mind what does it happen uh, beyond this singularity, because uh, my model cannot describe this part. So uh, if I here I put an absorbing barrier, a reflexive barrier, an identity, it doesn't mind, because I, my, my the uh, theory doesn't arrive beyond this part. This uh, yeah, I it think tells you that there is no way. I mean, it tells you that you go into the, to the except, paradox by except if you have a wormhole, if you can pass through the singularity in some in some way, and clear you at this yeah. point you can observe uh, even beyond uh, so, the singularity. So you can start to do some uh, uh, speculation of okay, when I reach the singularity, I go beyond singularity. <laughs> uh, I invent I, I my new uh, space time structure so that I still have to and then perhaps you can get something. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to, to preserve always the unitarity uh, in my model. Otherwise, I'm just discretized. Yeah, uh, that's the point. I mean, you, you try to preserve unitarity. Okay? You reach the singularity and then. And clear is broken. Yeah. Now, extend it some way <laughs> so that it looks like the real situation but I just think oh, it, uh, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing uh, perspective I, I, I am. and you conserve in that, uh, and that space time and then you project or something I don't know uh, but so clearly there is no signature of the, there is going to be any transfer of quality from one part to the other something like that so yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 thank you for this. Okay, so what I was saying is that uh, in principle we need uh, an infinite number, countable, but infinite number of uh, uh, local unitaries. It's not exactly what I want, so we can, uh, uh, we can wonder if we can discretize this uh, space-time metric. For instance, uh, uh, imagine that uh, we have a basis, a b-dimensional basis uh, with blue unitary and red unitary, because it's even less, is cheaper, is less expensive in your lab. You need just to be splitter to, to uni unitaries. And you plug these unitaries in uh, the quantum network in such a way to preserve the same continuum limit of before. So the question is, is it possible to reduce the rotation down to a finite number retaining the same class of curved Dirac equation in the continuum limit? Well, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we will uh, upload uh, uh, this paper very soon on archive. I will not uh, describe this solution here, but you can see that 
Clearly, we are far from quantized the metric, but this is uh, really uh, uh, something new um, respect to what we did before. Before, in some sense, we have just approximated and discretized our space-time metric. Here, we are, we are doing something very different. We are saying that there is a finite set of local unitaries, element of SU2, which are able to uh, generate any space-time metric. Okay? Any space-time, any classical space-time metric. That when we can remark that, uh, well, this space -time, classical space-time metric is generated by a, 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 a basis uh, in uh, uh, an Hilbert, an Hilbert space basis. So this is quite uh, quite uh, curious. Sure, sorry. So you mean yes. that you have some uh, superposition of metrics or something, some, some probability of having the red metric and some probability of having the blue metric or something. Uh, no, but I will uh, came to exactly to this <laughs> in the following. Uh, no, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this paper, we will just prove that we can, uh, um, we can uh, with a finite uh, uh, number of local rotation, we can reproduce any space-time. Uh, when I, when I uh, talk about space-time, I uh, would recall that I'm not simulating Einstein field equation, I'm just simulating Dirac equation in cover space-time. We are very far to, to, to simulate Einstein field equation in this framework. Uh, but here not. For each point of the space-time lattice, I have a local unitary. Now, a finite set of local unitary. Okay. Now, to <laughs> exactly what you, you meant before, uh, but uh, slightly different. Uh, suppose that uh, instead of uh, considering uh, a finite set of local unitaries and then, okay, say, uh, I want to prove a theorem that you know, at first order I recover the Dirac equation in any cover space time, I just cut our space time uh, network and um, uh, composed by a, a finite number of local unitaries. Uh, for instance, here in these two uh, different uh, sectors of this network, A and B, that can be considered in some sense uh, two topologies, different topologies. And uh, notice that uh, uh, they are in some sense uh, two quantum topologies, in some sense. Um, yes, there is, also, there is a geometry here, it's not just uh, a graph, but uh, it's, uh, it is uh, dramatically approaching to the problem of quantum graffiti. And uh, what we can say, uh, are superposition of these A and B possible in this, uh, in this framework? And what does it mean in the continuum limit? Because if we, if we suppose that in the, at first order, this topology gives you a, 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 a curvature, a given curvature of your space-time metric, but what does it mean if we have a superposi superposition of these two quantum topologies? Is meaningful, uh, meaningful is, uh, we don't know. We, we didn't stop that. Other uh, more classical question are, okay, uh, we recover uh, Dirac equation covers space time, this equation is covariant. Uh, any idea of discrete analogous of co general covariance? Uh, any idea about interaction and multiparticle interaction in this framework? These are uh, certainly uh, next, uh, next goal that we want to approach. Uh, some historical, uh, now historical for, to me, uh, these two uh, are uh, two of the publications that I, I, I did uh, during my PhD. Uh, this was just a, a generalization of the first one. The first one is just what I present to you. Uh, this uh, is the publication of um, Pablo, Stefano and Marcelo, the, um, uh, 2016. And about the paired quantum work, and this is what uh, you will uh, probably see soon, very soon on archive. It's the same title here, but with uh, an extension. Possible interaction, and I will conclude with that. Uh, clearly, this, this is a, a, a very, very active uh, field of research. We can just list a few uh, inter possible interaction with, for instance, uh, fundamental informatics, what, uh, uh, what concerns mod uh, modeling, uh, uh, cover propagation, and quantum information processing with relati relativistic effects. Uh, then numerical analysis. Uh, uh, I have a, a project with, uh, with um, uh, Viv Kendon, who, who is working uh, at Durham University, 
about uh, uh, um, this is just computational physics in some sense, how to simulate uh, cosmic structure, or inflation, or black hole, etc. This is a, another perspective of this work. Not fundamental, but uh, uh, for sure something that is related to how uh, can we do sa uh, some numerical simulation in the most e efficient way, etc. Um, and then fundamental out ones, outcomes. Yes, uh, this is the most important part for me, to me, uh, how we can approach uh, quantum gravity from, mm, from this perspective. Uh, is this approach uh, a new quantum computational approach to this problem? Um, is the, 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 the last model that I, that I present to you, the superposition of topologies, a sort of bridge between uh, uh, lattice and quantum gravity? Uh, this is uh, what we, we should uh, discover uh, in the next, uh, next month, year, probably. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>